Hello. Welcome. God bless you. Glad that you're here. If we haven't met, my name is Stephen. I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship Church, and we're located in southern Brooklyn in a community called Coney Island. Thanks so much for joining us for today's daily devotion. If you're new here, our daily devotion series is where we take a chapter from the Bible and we read it together. We post these videos five days a week, and uh, you can, of course, access them at any time. But what we encourage our people to do is to um, follow along five days a week or as close as we can get to it and um, include some of God's Word in your day. These, these videos are designed to just make it easier to do that. And in a perfect world, everybody would sit down and read the Bible for 12 hours a day and we would just have time like that. Uh, in a less perfect world, we would carve out a little time, prioritize a little time in our busy day to uh, read. It takes about eight or ten minutes usually to read a chapter, and so we encourage people to do that. But we also know that, you know, statistically, a lot of people don't, and so we created these tools to help. You know, maybe, maybe, it, maybe it's a good place to start just to be able to listen as you're on the train or driving to work or whatever, having a cup of coffee. So, hope you're blessed wherever you are uh, in the world today, whatever time of day it is for you. It's very early morning here, and I'm looking at the beginnings of a very beautiful kind of pink and orange sunrise uh, just above the Verrazano Bridge, which I'm looking out, looking at right outside my window in downtown Brooklyn. Uh, it's a blessing. Today, we are reading John chapter 12. We're a little past the halfway point in John's gospel. And uh, in John chapter 11, we saw that the Passover celebration is approaching and that will um, usher us into what we call the Passion Week. That is the week of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. He's coming to celebrate the Passover. We'll actually see that in, in, in this chapter. And then that last week of Jesus' uh, life and earthly ministry, where he will ultimately, at the end of the week, uh, be arrested, be convicted by a sham trial, be beaten, condemned, crucified, and then gloriously raised again. So not all of that happens in, in this chapter, but this chapter we will see Jesus anointed at Bethany, we will see Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We'll see Jesus predict his death. He, he reached a point with his disciples where he began to sort of forewarn them what would, uh, what would come. And then uh, we see the unbelief of some of the people. This chapter has uh, four, 50 verses, so I'd call it about average length. Let's read now John chapter 12. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, by the way. Um, this is just the translation that we use, teach from, and uh, put in people's hands in our church. It's not the only one. There are a lot of contemporary English translations. There are some English translations that are decidedly not contemporary or uncontemporary. Um, we like contemporary English translations just because of the easiest to understand, and we like this particular translation because it has an easy, accessible reading level. This is written on a sixth grade reading level, which is um, appropriate for the largest number of people in our ministry. And um, I think most people who are following along these videos can understand a sixth grade reading level. We don't think it takes away from um, the experience of reading God's Word. Some of the other translations are a little more academic. Uh, they have a higher reading level, 11th, 12th grade, some of them. Uh, and that's fine. But we also know that some people might struggle with the language and, and understanding. And we think God's Word is intended to be understood. So for our purposes here, we just want to make these videos as easy to understand uh, as possible. So, John chapter 12, 
begins this way in verse 1. Six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from the dead. We saw that in chapter 11. A dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor, and Martha served, and Lazarus was among those who ate with him. The man who was previously dead is now having Jesus over for dinner. Then Mary took a 12-ounce jar of expensive perfume made from the essence of nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance. But Judas Iscariot, that Judas, the disciple who would soon betray him, said, That perfume is worth a year's wages. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. And it's not that he cared for the poor. He was a thief, and since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole some for himself. And Jesus replied, Leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You'll always have the poor among you, but you won't always have me. When all the people heard of Jesus' arrival, they flocked to see him and also to see Lazarus, the man Jesus had raised from the dead. Then the leading priest decided to kill Lazarus too, for it was because of him that many people had deserted them and believed in Jesus. The next day, the news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city, and a large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. They shouted, Praise God! Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel! Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, Don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey's colt. His disciples didn't understand at the time that this was the fulfillment of prophecy, but after Jesus entered into his glory, they remembered what had happened and realized these things had been written about him. Many in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus from the tomb, raising him from the dead, and they were telling others about it. That was the reason so many went out to meet him, because they had heard about this miraculous sign. And then the Pharisees said to each other, There's nothing we can do. Look, everyone has gone after him. And some Greeks who had come to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration paid a, Philip, a, a visit to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and they said, Sir, we want to meet Jesus. Philip told Andrew about it. And they went together to ask Jesus. And Jesus replied, Now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter His glory. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Those who love their life in this world will lose it. Those who care nothing for their life in this world will keep it for eternity. Anyone who wants to be my disciple must follow me because my servants must be where I am. And the Father will honor anyone who serves me. Now my soul is deeply, deeply troubled. Should I pray, Father, save me from this hour? But this is the very reason I came. Father, bring glory to your name. And then a voice spoke from heaven saying, I've already brought glory to my name and I will do so again. When the crowd heard the voice, some thought it was thunder, while others declared an angel had spoken to him. And then Jesus told him, The voice was for your benefit, not mine. The time for judging this world has come when Satan, the ruler of this world, will be cast out. And when I'm lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this to indicate how he was going to die. The crowd responded, We understood from Scripture that the Messiah would live forever. How can you say the Son of Man will die? Just who is this Son of Man anyway? And Jesus replied, My light will shine for you just a little longer. Walk in the light while you can, so the darkness will not overtake you. Those who walk in the darkness cannot see where they're going. Put your trust in the light while there's still time. Then you'll become children of the light. And after saying these things, Jesus went away and was hidden from them. Verse 37. But despite all the miraculous signs Jesus had done, most of the people still did not believe in Him. And this is exactly what Isaiah the prophet had predicted. Lord, who believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed His powerful arm? But the people couldn't believe, for as Isaiah also said, the Lord has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts so that their eyes cannot see, their hearts cannot understand, and they cannot turn to me and have me heal them. Isaiah was referring to Jesus when he said this because he saw the future and spoke of the Messiah's glory. Many people did believe in Him, however, including some of the Jewish leaders, but they wouldn't admit it for fear that the Pharisees would expel them from the synagogue. They loved human praise more than the praise of God. Jesus shouted to the crowds, If you trust me, you are trusting not only me, but also God who sent me. 
When you see me, you are seeing the one who sent me. I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. I will not judge those who hear me, but don't obey me, for I have come to save the world, not judge it. But all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. I will speak of my own authority. The Father who sent me has commanded me what to say and how to say it, and I know his commands lead to eternal life. So I say whatever the Father tells me to say. That concludes John chapter 12. Hope you've been blessed by this chapter uh, of God's Word, of the New Testament, of the Gospel of John. We've been blessed by your participation, and we hope that you'll join us again and participate next time as we read John chapter 13. God bless you.